Alrighty, we got a four on four lined up. It's myself and Luis Salvato, the two LSBs, alongside Sandy Dog and Ick, battling against Tom Martell, Slacks, Troll Ascetic, and Strider. So we got a, a good squad here. And uh, you know what? Pick one, pack one. Minsk and Boo. Animate Dead's close. I think Animate Dead is good. I think Minsk and Boo is a better pick one, pack one selection. It's just so busted. If you cast Minsk and Boo and they don't counterspell it or have like a really good answer, you're usually going to either run them over completely if they can't answer it, or if they can kind of answer it, they like counsels judgment the Minsk and Boo and your 4-4 trampling hasted hamster still just gives you a ton of equity. Tom's probably going to take Animate Dead. Unless he tries to get real clever. There's also a currency converter. Yeah, that's all good. Well and good. Strider also passing to be drafts black a lot of the time. So I don't mind starting with Minsk and Boo. Though the second pick is... Oh, never mind. There's an ignoble hierarchy. Oof, for a second, I was like going to say the second pick was disappointing. Maybe I would take like a Rabble Master or a Death Greeter Champion. But ignoble hierarchy is actually kind of the perfect follow-up. I think that's even better than Birds of Paradise after first picking Minsk and Boo. So slamming that... Passing Tom, maybe a bone shards if he took the animate dead. And going to be very happy with this start. I mean, this this is a good proactive start. Would love to get past, like, a broadside bombardiers, though. Of course, that card's just kind of busted. So, obviously, I would like to get, get past busted cards. But more to the point, this is kind of like the Rabble Master, Lightning Bolt, Birds of Paradise, Ignoble Hierarch style deck. That's what we're going for, at least with these first two picks, though. Of course, this could easily transition into Domain. Not a whole lot of other directions that involve these two cards, really. I mean, there obviously are other other ways to do it, but uh, all right. Uh, I do like Memory Lapse, but this isn't a spot where I think you should take it. I think Chain Lightning is just really good. Chain Lightning is a, it's a very strong card. I like it more than Llanowar Elves. I would take Noble Hierarch or Birds of Paradise here, but... I think the mono green elves are quite a bit weaker, and Chain Lightning is just one of the best removal spells because it's also player removal. And this deck's going to be aggressive. So passing a Memory Lapse and a Duress are the most notable cards, but pretty happy with this. And if Strider is also drafting like Blue-Black, which, I mean, I guess Memory Lapse and Duress make that a little less likely, but if Strider is drafting Blue-Black, maybe that can help cut Tom as well. Though, of note, we haven't seen a good white card yet. It's only been a couple packs, but... My, my, my spidey sense is tingling a little bit that uh, Strider might be drafting white. So we'll have to see here. This one's tough because Othari is very good. It would be another color. Can't take Titania here. Oh, Namesticker Goblin's also good, but it doesn't cast Minsk and Boo, which is kind of a shame. Grim Monolith isn't really what this deck's looking to do. Honestly, it, it probably is Othari. Just hope to get the right mana dorks. But uh, Naya mid-range? Yeah, there we go. I mean, Pyrokinesis and Burst Lightning are both fine. Simeon Spirit Guide is actually really sick with Minsk and Boo, but I don't think I can take it over a card like Othari. So I'll take that, and I'm not thrilled by it, especially since this doesn't tap for white, the Ignoble, but I think that's a little better. And there's five red cards here. There's, you know, def I don't really want the Faithless looting, but the other four are cards I'm interested in. And someone's going to take Corpse Dance, probably Tom. Someone's going to take Divining Top. Someone's going to take Fairy Mastermind. Someone's going to take Grim. And someone might even take Titania, but even if they don't, it means I'm going to get at least one or two red cards uh, and my, potentially my option of them back. Okay, this is another interesting one. There's Sentinel of the Nameless City, which I've been really impressed by. Perfect you know, card to play on turn two after playing Ignoble. There's also Gemstone Caverns, which is really good in the style of deck. I think Gemstone's powerful enough that I'm supposed to take it, though. It does give you this mental burden of having to side it out when on the play and all that, but just acceleration, Chrome Mock style acceleration is still really good, especially when you're trying to put assertive threats into play early. So eh, that's what I'm going to go with here. And here, okay, well here there's some white cards, but they're still not aggressive white cards. I mean, I guess Armageddon kind of is, but in Eagles of the North you'd play. But yeah, Balance isn't an aggressive card, and obviously Knight of Autumn and Thought Profound, you don't really count. Oh, Malcolm in this pack. I'm going to take... One of these red-green lands. I guess I should take Proving Ground because I have Ignoble. So now I have two black sources. And that's better than having one black and one blue. All right. That's fair. Oh, that's a late Fast Bond. I mean, I'll probably take it. Seventh pick Fast Bond is definitely something. Uh, 
Invasion of Tarkir is a two mana deal to that if you attack it for five damage turns into a four four, which I think is pretty strong. But I don't know. I I, I think the dream is there, but I don't think the card's actually good enough. I'm probably going to cut it. I just added it a couple drafts ago, and I still I haven't liked it. I'm not looking at Coveted Jewel or Talisman. I mean, Talisman helps with authority, but I still don't. I'm not going to take a Talisman over Fast Bond. And now there's Shatter Skull Smashing, which is good in this kind of deck. But, you know, Fast Bond's just a really strong card. I'll just take it. And uh, we'll see if we end up playing it. Okay, this pack has a Mind Collapse, which is good. Again, if you tap out for one of these and just kill our blocker, it's great. Scholar's good too. I don't really care much for Chromatic Star. Triumph of St. Catherine's fine. It's 5-5 five, five lifelink miracle. I guess one reason to not take Fast Bond is I'm Salvato is two two drafters down. I don't think Tom would take the Fast Bond, and Salvato loves Fast Bond decks. But he also like doesn't win as much with them as I would like, so maybe I'm protecting him from himself. Uh, I'm just gonna take the mind collapse. I still think that's what I'm doing. I still think, despite Fast Bond and Authority kind of like muddling things up a little, I'm gonna be the aggressive red green deck. And oh wow, I like Unholy Heat, but I like Chandra more, especially given that I have mind collapse and chain lightning. Nature's Lore is also good. It's a way to ramp to four here, and it can go get Zeator's Proving Ground. But Chandra is exactly what I want here. I don't think I want Inferno Titan. That just doesn't seem to be the sort of thing this deck is really going to be into. I, it's just a little too high of ramp. I kind of want Legolas's quick reflexes. It's so sick with Othari or, or even Minsk and Boo. There's also two artifact destruction cards, but you know what? I'll, I'll go with the quick reflexes. I also want to give that card a little bit more time to shine because it's on the chopping block too. I do a lot of iteration on the cube. All right. Elder Gargaroth. Sure. It's not like I, oh, uh, you know what? I'm just going to hate Rotting Register. I don't, uh, this deck doesn't really need a gar Gargaroth. All right. Spirit Guide and Pyrokinesis both came back. I'm looking like a Spirit Guide deck now. And I'm probably not a Fast Bond deck at the moment. I mean, I do really like Pyrokinesis. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take Pyrokinesis. There's matchups where it's just sick. All right. I'll take Ashen Rider because I still don't want to pass those reanimation cards. Mind Collapse and Pyrokinesis are similar, but if you play against White Weenie, it's such a good card. And. Maybe I just play Fast Bond and not Simeon Spirit Guide. I don't really like having both those cards in the same deck all that much. All right. I mean, for pack one, I think this was really good. Red is clearly open. Less clear on green, but we did get a really late Fast Bond. Um, I'm not going to play Gruff Triplets, but I don't really care about passing Thopter Foundry. And if Tom has like a Flash or Reanimate deck, he might want Gruff Triplets. Oh, we got the Shatter Skull Smashing for free. All right. The Fast Bond. So red's definitely open. And... It didn't seem like green was necessarily being cut. There wasn't that much green, but that was a late fast bond. All right. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a time walk. All right. Well, I guess we picked wrong on the Zeator's Proving Ground. Always punished for not taking blue. Uh, there's a Palace Jailer I'm passing, which I don't love. Flash going the other direction. But things have certainly changed. All right. We're slamming time walk here. And nothing too exciting to get back. Oh, there's a Lightning Bolt. I do like that. There's also Feywild Caretaker. And now that I have Time Walk, Othari is almost assuredly not in the mix, or at least I'm really not prioritizing it. I could be like a blue-red deck. I mean, I've got Fast Bond and Ignoble. I'm going to play Minskin Boo, but I could be basically blue-red base splashing Minskin Boo. That's an option. That's an option. You know what? As much as I love Lightning Bolt, I actually do think it's Feywild Caretaker or Prismatic Vista. I don't need Bolt when I have all these removal spells. As good as Bolt is. I guess Prismatic Vista... I mean, I have... Yeah, I have Authority, so, like... I could even put the Authority back in if my mana gets good enough. So I think Prismatic Vista now... I mean, honestly, now I might take just take Mystic Confluence. And then just try to cut Tom in blue pack three. We, we saw a little bit of blue. Hmm. There's also Sheldock. There's no... Like, I don't want any of these green cards that much. All right. I guess I will take Mystic Confluence. It's kind of a weird pivot, but... I think that was good. Okay, now Breeding Pool definitely seems appealing because I could just be Teamer. Also, the best, the best, all the best cards to go with Time Walk are green. Eternal Witness, which we haven't seen. Tamiyo, which we haven't seen. I guess Jace is good and Snapcaster is good, but Regrowth. So yeah, let's just take Breeding Pool here. Pour one out for the Ketria Triome this could have been, but you know what? I didn't really factor on, on, in on opening Time Walk because I just never open cards that strong, so... <laughs> Let's see what we can do in terms of pivoting here. This fast, I have a fast bond still kind of lurking. Same with a 
Othari. I'm not seeing any black. Tom is almost assuredly playing reanimator. And I could be like blue, red, green. And that's looking the most likely, especially after picking up Breeding Pool and Prismatic Vista. All right, now there's a blue, red, white land, which also would help cast Othari. There's an untapped red, green land. There's a wall of roots. I like Goldspan Dragon. Goldspan Time Walk is pretty sick. Maybe I just take Goldspan Dragon. I know I'm going to be red. Yeah, Goldspan looks awesome here. There's just a lot, a lot going for it. And I do like taking the red card. I mean, Ragrin Triumph would also be good for sure. But I kind of like where we're at here. There's, there's definitely some good potential. All right, well, this actually worked fine because now we get Xander's Lounge, which is basically like Ragrin Triumph. Again, ignore, it doesn't help cast Othari, but I'm not sure I want to do that anyway. So let's just take the Xander's Lounge. Though I guess there's an argument that taking the Raugrin Trium instead of Goldspan lets me just play Othari instead of Goldspan, so it's just a little bit better. I could see that. Hmm, Farseek. This actually could be good. There's also tapped blue-green Scryland. Also Ramanop to go with Fast Bond. I don't recall seeing Xuronor, but this doesn't look like that much of a Ramanop deck in before I open Strip Mine. There's also Mana Morphos, but I'm not super into that. I actually think this is a Farseek deck. Ramping to four for Chandra and Minsk, five for Goldspan seems good. And it can go get any color of other land. So it can go get Xander's Lounge or Proven Ground. Okay. Okay, I, I think that this is going quite well. Obviously, taking Time Walk into Mystic Confluence was like kind of an unexpected pivot, but I think it's okay. Oh man, Brain Freeze followed by LED, but I'm not in a position to take either, and I think Flame Slash looks really good here, so let's just do that. I feel pretty good about not taking the Lightning Bolt as well, given that I picked up the Flame Slash. As things currently stand, I guess I would run Fast Bond, just... I really like having at least one draw seven when I do that, or like the Ramanop type stuff, but we'll see. Oh, I love Chrome Host Seed Shark. I also have Pyrokinesis and Mind Collapse. It's sick with both of those, and it's sick with Time Walk, and it's just a good card. It's a three mana, two, four flying. It's really burly. Okay. Birds of Paradise would be just an incredible open here. I mean, I guess I'm hoping for slightly better. Uh, and then I'm hoping pack three, I can see some things like Tamio or Regrowth to really take advantage of the Time Walk, though Goldspan and Minsk and Boo and Chandra with Time Walk, I mean, even Chrome Host, are all very, very good. Okay, there's Green White and Blue White Lands. I don't think I'm that into those. I actually really like Stern Scolding. I've had good experiences with the card. I think it's possible that I don't play a whole lot of green, but I still have two really powerful green accelerants, and I have Breeding Pool, Xander, or Proving Ground, and Prismatic Vista, so... I think I'm just going to be straight up three colors, not really having a splash color, but I, that's fine. I have a bunch of lands that help me with that. Ooh, this is one of the new regrowths, actually. Balaged Recovery. It's a tapped green land, but also a regrowth. So I think I'm just going to take that. That looks great. Court of Garenbrig is also good, and that's a late one, but I like that. Oh, Sail into the West. That's my draw seven. All right. I do like Tarmogoyf and Wayfinder in this deck, but I feel like Oh, and a Copperline Gorge, what a gift. I feel like I don't need to do that. Uh, I'll just hit the Baleful Strix. I don't care about Seething Song. It's good with Goldspan, and I guess okay with Chandra, but I I'm not that into it. Sorry, I'm just not that into you. All right, well, going into pack three, this deck has, looks fantastic. I mean, obviously you could always use more lands, but I feel like I have a good amount of them. <laughs> Underworld Breach going the other direction. Could have had the Brain Breach LED. On the other hand, though, Time Spiral... Like, Underworld Breach Time Walk is busted, but I think I just take Time Spiral, and I think that's what we're doing. We're, we've turned from being red-green aggro. I thought this was going to be somewhat straightforward to... Well, very much not, but Time Spiral looks great here, so I'm going to take the Time Spiral, and we're just going to... We're going to be going big. I'm glad I specced on the Fast Bond. I like how this looks. The, the spell lands are pretty nice. There's... Definitely enough wind conditions here. I've got Flame Slash and Chain Lightning and Stern Scolding to protect myself. I don't know about this Mind Collapse. I'm going to take the Mind Collapse out for the time being. The, the the less proactive I am and the more I care about having lands in play for things like Time Spar, the less I want those. Oh. Well, look, I have Xander's Lounge and Proven Ground. I guess DT is the card to take. I don't really want to pass Tama DT, though he's going to get Dark Ritual anyway. But DT Time Walk is just so disgusting. And DT's with Draw 7, so all right. We're in. We are in. Good pack. This pack is Dark Ritual, Dismember, Bobble, Tinker, Emrakul. 
There's some good ones. Noise Marine, a new Warhammer card. Well, new to the cube, that is. I mean, could use a little bit more fixing here, but, you know, can't we all? All right, this is a classic pick here. There's Exploration, which now that I have the two draw sevens and these Planeswalkers, I'm probably going to take, though Botanical Sanctum is also very appealing. I feel like getting that late Copperline Gorge made me brave enough to just take Exploration here. I think Exploration is going to be really critical. And there's a chance Botanical Sanctum comes back around. This pack has a bunch of cards in it. Also, uh, Pentad Prism is a card I would be interested in. Once you're playing this many colors, I think Prism becomes a legit addition. And Balagan Recovery and Shatter Skull Smashing are going to let me play like 19, maybe 20 lands in this deck. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I mean, I'll, I'll keep taking Library when people keep passing it to me. Fourth pick Library, I still think, is likely not... 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 Not complimentary to the to three people who passed it, let's just say. I, I don't know. I, I, there's just not that many cards I take over library. I do like Remand. I would take that otherwise, but I'm going to slam library here. It makes me even happier about the exploration pick. It's a really good combo. Like, you're on the draw. You go library, go. End of turn, drop to eight, drop to nine. Play a land, go to eight. Play exploration, go to seven. Draw with library, play another land. And all of a sudden, you're drawing two a turn, playing two lands a turn. Like, obviously, you can't play two lands every turn and play spells and use library, but like... You don't need to draw five cards off library. Drawing two or three is already plenty. And then the exploration and fast bond make up for the, you know, the the part you're putting yourself behind with library. So I think it is all extremely strong. The one thing I miss with mind claps, by the way, on an off topic is uh, gold span. Gold span, attack, make a treasure, post combat, mind collapse it to get another treasure. <sighs> all right, what are we doing here? Because there's thundering falls, blue red surveil land. That's great. Oliphant is also good because it can go get Proven Ground or Xander's Lounge. gets all my colors. Though it's kind of like double tapped, which is a little annoying. Mm, there's also Snuff Out if I wanted to get real cheeky with the two Trilands and Prismatic Beast, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think Oliphant's got to be good here, especially with Pyrokinesis in deck. It's a land that I can pitch to Pyrokinesis. I think that that is pretty good. I do need to get a few more spells, but obviously I'm going to be able to do that with ease. A few more lands would also be nice. Yeah, a few more good cards. Just, you know, I just need everything. Yeah. I don't really, though. I, I don't... I'm not worried about win conditions. And my, my fixing is looking decent. Uh, World Spine Worm to go with the Flash, I guess. There's Wasteland here. Wasteland's another way to play a lot of lands. There's also... Oh, I only have one. I like Deathrite Shaman, but with only one fetch land, it's like a little bit dicey. Not a guy's Cradle deck, sadly. I do like Cradle as well. Um, passing a Deluge and a Gorial's Vengeance, whatever. Don't want Young Pyro here. It is kind of nice. No, I'll just take the Wasteland. I think Wasteland's great. Ooh, a new addition. General Ferris Rockerick. Three mana, three one, hexproof for monocolor. So pretty hard to kill. And when you ever cast a multicolor spell, you get a four four. Pretty sick. Mmm, I love Hex Drinker. Teferi and Grist are both good, but that would be an, a fifth color for Teferi, which I don't really want to do. I don't really want to take Waterlog Grove. I think I might take Hex Drinker. I th think it's a pretty solid one. There's also Savannah, but that doesn't really help me a whole lot. I mean, I guess it lets me play Othari, maybe. Let's just take the Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker's good. Pick eight. Oh, there's Tamio. Whew. All right. I was really hoping to get Tamio. So Tamio Time Walk is just so good. This is looking excellent. Currently, as it stands, it's 18 land plus Oliphant and the two spell lands, so I could even cut a card. Maybe I cut Pyrokinesis, because I don't have tons of red cards, and I have Chain Lightning, Flame Slash, Stern Scolding. Something like that. And then that leaves me with 19 lands plus three spells. Okay, maybe that's the other direction. Uh, here, i probably just take Raging Ravine. Or another red-green land is good, even if it's tapped. Sicarian Infiltrator is good if you have a lot of mana, but I don't feel like that's where I want. I've got two draw sevens. Let's just take... Raging Ravine, pass, Fatal Push, plus Cut Down, whatever. Imidane's Recruiter is also, I think, pretty good, but not so much for this deck. Okay, maybe Pyrokinesis back in. Maybe 18 lands plus the three spell lands is, is actually pretty good. I mean, Pyrokinesis, when two of your lands pitch to cast it, is nice. All right, oh, that's such a late Dark Ritual. I'm not going to play Teferi. Bobble's just okay here. Well, so what does Bobble do? It lets me store a card when I'm going to cast a draw seven. That's good. 
if I have Prismatic Vista, it lets me get a little bit of like a mini period in. And with Tamiyo, I get to know my top card. No, I'm just going to take the Dark Ritual. I, I think Dark Ritual is really, really strong. So I think it helps my team win percentage quite a bit more to do that. All right. Tar Pit Wield, which has some appeal because of Demonic Tutor, but it's got to just be Sakura Tribelder. This looks like a fine Sakura Tribelder deck. Oh, Once Upon a Time is a busted card, too. I'll pass a sinkhole. That's fine. Once Upon a Time, when you can go get Library or Wasteland, is really strong. I'm going to start with Gemstone Caverns in the side, I think. I don't like main decking caverns in decks with tons of colors that also have uh, no ways to, like, discard it, you know, for value. I'll just take the Unearth, I guess. Currently, this is now 16 land plus the three, so kind of 19. Oh, Pyromancer came back. Do I want to take Maelstrom Pulse or Pyromancer here? The Pulse is mostly a hate draft. I just don't think I'm going to play the Pyromancer is the problem. It, it It's just not what my game plan is. So I'll take Maelstrom Pulse and then last pick, Waterlock Grove. I, okay, I'm going to play my last pick. That's nice. All right, let's get to deck building. I do like this deck. All right, we don't have too many cuts to make. I think the Hex Drinker is going to be good. This is currently... If you count those as all lands, 16, 19 lands. I've got Far Seek, Sakura Tribe Builder, and Once Upon a Time can find a land. Yeah, that actually sounds about right. Let me see if the basics work out. I get, I still get to add seven. That's probably going to be fine because it's going to be one swamp, probably like mountain, island, one, two, three forests at minimum. So this is Breeding Pool, Copperline Gorge, three forests is five, Vista six, Ravine seven, Grove is eight, Proven Grounds nine, Balligate Recovery is ten green sources, and Oliphant can get Proven Grounds, so kind of 11 green sources. And one, two, three, four, five, six blue sources. Probably going to have another island here is my guess, but we'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red sources plus Ignoble. And everyone gets Farseek and Sakura Tribuilder. Um, I do like Wasteland. I'm kind of wondering if there's a chance this deck wants to cut Wasteland because it's got so many colors and play a second mountain and a second island. The thing is I have to have basic swamp because I have both Sakura Tribe Builder and Prismatic Vista. A colorless land is pretty tough. I just, ha I like having the second basic of blue and red because I have double blue and double red cards and I, and I have two ways to search for basics. It feels like it actually might come up. Yeah, this deck looks pretty awesome. This is just a really good time walk deck, I think. I guess the only argument you could like if you want to play one more land, I mean, it's still kind of like 19 lands. Yeah, no, this looks fine. And I think I want both Exploration and Fast Spawn just to speed the deck up. Yeah, this deck looks sweet. Let's let's see what my teammates are up to. Easy build and uh, hopefully an easy draft. We'll see. All right, Salvato's got a nice one. He got a last pick, Mightstone and Weakstone, which was sick because he's got Misha's Workshop, Urza's Saga, Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer, Flash, World Spine, Triplicate Titan, Coveted Jewel, Ancestral Recall. I love it. Salvato's really done it this time. Even as Zerda, Basalt, and Grim for infinite mana with Ballista. Such a, such a sick deck. Ick has a Bolt, Mana Drain, Lelia, Aragorn, Fourth the Orlingus, Parallax Wave, Caves of Chaos Adventure. Just straight up kind of like Jeskai, but with Thundering Falls, Raugrin Triumph, Flooded Strand, two Land Cyclers, and three Blue White Duels. So good mana. Sandy's on Black Red Reanimator, but he didn't post his list, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, we're battling here. Against Jesse, we're on the draw. Yeah, I mean, I can't really mulligan this hand. This hand could use, well, all my hands could use Exploration or Fast Bond, I'll say that. Well, the Wasteland's coming in, by the way. <laughs> uh, let's just say the second mountain is the uh, Wasteland. Mm, Stern Scolding, huh? I don't really think I can afford to play that. I think I'm just going to play a turn one Hex Drinker. Against a blue deck, I don't think I need to have Stern Scolding up on turn two. And obviously, like, that could change. It could be blue-red aggro or blue-white aggro, something like that. But Jesse rarely drafts those decks. And then Odawara go. Okay, any fast bonds? No, Raging Ravine. Well, let's just send with this. I'm going to play a tap land this turn. 
his fairy mastermind. Good for him, I suppose. All right, level up this once and play Raging Ravine. I think that's better than playing Shatter Skull Smashing or Balagid Recovery. Oh, what do we have? Deduce. Nice. I do like that card. I think it's actually like pretty good for a cube. So it's a powerful card. Let's see if he hit his third land. Because you don't play Odawara unless you, you have to, basically. So strip mine. Okay. Currency converter. Eww, I don't like any of this. He's probably not going to strip mine here. He could, but it feels like you'd want to spend mana. Oh, top? Really? Instead of using currency converter or cracking clue? That is kind of interesting. That makes me think he's got like a spell pierce in hand or something. But I don't know. I'm just going to play hex drinker. Send for two with... This is he gonna if he's cycled like my team has Lorien revealed Oliphant and the Eagles so I guess if he cycled Troll or Generous Ent and was able to make a Rogue and block that would be rough but yeah what are you gonna do all right Chrome Host Seed Shark is pretty good it makes me feel a lot better about Strip Mine now if he Strip Mines me I just pump the Hex Drinker and that's fine I guess he's gonna do something else maybe he's just use Converter or crack the Clue right now okay he's converting. He knows the order of his top two cards because he used Sensei's top. Discards V click. Interesting. Into spin top. Oh, is he really just looking for land that badly? All right. Well, I'm going to get to slam Chandra next turn, so that's going to be pretty good. Oh, does he have swords now? Oh, dismember. I was hoping to get a 4 4 token. All right, well, we're going to play Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, pay three life, and then just go Chandra, add red, red, pump Hex Drinker twice to a 4-4. Four, four. And then now I get to attack Jesse down to eight. He's, he's at eight life facing down a Hex Drinker. And, oh, what else can he do here? Urza? Urza's good. I, it's kind of a shame. I, I would have liked to Stern Scolding that. But Chandra can take out the Urza if I need to, and I can make Hex drink. Oh, this actually just looks lethal. Unless he's got, like, Brazen Borrower or something. Because I just Hex Drinker up to protection from everything attack, and then Chandra plus one to deal two damage. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the case. It's going to spin top, but I, I'm telling you, Hex Drinker is just really that good. Hex Drinker will have done 12 damage this game. It did 12, Dismember did 2, and uh, Chandra did 2, I guess, is at least the plan. He can't, oh, he can't even play an instant. I guess he could have bounced Chandra. Um, sure, Excel the top card. Oh, doesn't even see the top card. All right, that was game one. All right, so going into game two, I guess I'll keep Stern Scolding. It counters Vendillion, Click, and Urza, which is pretty nice. I'll put in Wasteland. Maybe I just take out Chain Lightning and I cheat Wasteland as a spell. Chain Lightning didn't seem good against anything I saw, though. I think Pyrokinesis could still be good. Oh, and I'm going to be on the draw, so I want Gemstone Caverns. Maybe I cut a Dual Land at that point. Like, I could cut, like, a Waterlog Grove. Or, you know what? Maybe I don't play Gemstone Caverns because I have Fast Bond and Exploration. And that's, like, kind of a lot of that effect. All right. I think I'm good. Let's see how game two goes on the draw here. I didn't even have to play my time walk. <laughs> this game I will be playing my time walk. All right. I will keep this. This is turn one waterlog grove. I'm really glad I didn't switch that into gemstone caverns, huh? All right. Let's get a draw seven. Oh, exploration was maybe the worst draw in my entire deck. So that's kind of a beat. And time walk. And Raging Ravine. All right, sail into the west. You know what? Sometimes you just call it. I guess uh, <laughs> this is, I, I'm kind of turn one in slacks here. This is ridiculous. That's what he gets for beating me at the Pro Tour. We, we had a really good record too. We were like eight and two, nine and two or something and he beat me. All right, well, I'll, I'm going to get seven more cards here. Let's see if Jesse wants seven. Uh, yeah, he discarded Time Twister. Ooh, let's go Hex Drinker. This is my effective turn one, by the way. I would say this is a reasonable hand. And by reasonable, I mean extremely unreasonable. 
turn one leveled up hex drinker, play nine lands, and then I have a, a time spiral. All right. Uh, I guess, you know what? I guess that's your go. Ooh, Mock Sapphire. Oh, man, Salvato opened the most ridiculous pack. I'll, I'll have to show it to you after this game, but, like, Jesse got a uh, second pick Sapphire, and then Sandy got a third pick Mana Crypt. So, yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. Um, well, let's see. Do I want a Time Spiral? Hmm. I kind of don't. I feel like I could just Hex Drinker and force Jesse to deal with the Hex Drinker. And if he does, then, you know, that's fine. And then, because I can also activate Raging Ravine. I just feel like getting my Time Spiral countered here doesn't sound like a great deal. And this puts Lethal on the board next turn, so he's got to do something. Takes 10 here. Oh, deducing. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I just, this feels like now he's got to tap out for something. I've got, I'm threatening Lethal here. And then next turn I can go cast a Time Spiral. So I went turn one, <laughs> fast bond, play a bunch of lands, time walk, untap sailing to less, hex drinker, level it up. Turn two, attack for a million. Well, still turn one effectively from Jesse's perspective. I mean, Urza is probably among the better things he could do here. And even then, it's going to be tough. I am at 10, so I do have to watch out a little bit. All right, currency converter. That's fine. And does he have the strip mine? Is he going to use top to look for strip mine? I'm not sure. There's a lot of things that are lethal if this time spot resolves, though. Uh, Minsk and Boo is lethal. I'm going to sack the Hex Drinker. Goldspan would, would be able to attack for lethal. I'll play my land. I don't really see a reason not to. <clears throat> Let's do this. Time Spiral. Are we looking for a counter spell, or do we already have one? I'm hoping that the answer is we just let it resolve. I mean, I'm at 10. Yeah, this would be close. If he's spinning top, I don't mind that too much. If, oh, he's tapping mana. He does have the literal counter spell. All right, well, in that case, I'm just going to attack for six here. So he did have counter spell last turn, I, I assume. And pass the turn. I can activate Raging Ravine if I need to. And he's got to find an answer for both Hex Drinker. Well, he doesn't really have to find an answer for Raging Ravine. He already has that. But he has to find an answer for Hex Drinker. Or if he wants to kill me, he has to put three more artifacts into play. And also be able to get Raging Ravine off the board. I mean, Strip Mine does that. But... I mean, this is about as good of a draw as I could possibly get. Uh, again, I, I went turn one, put a 4-4 Hex Drinker and like eight lands into play. Say go. I could have spiraled it on turn two if he had tapped out, but I thought it was good to just go whole hog on the Hex Drinker instead. And then end of turn, maybe I crack the Waterlog Grove if, uh, if I don't have anything better to do. But we'll see. Okay, he has... Spun with top, draws a card. So he didn't upkeep Urza. Doesn't directly have a way to put artifacts into play, like, because at this point the currency converter is not generating anything, unless he has a different way to discard. All right, he's got the strip mine. So he can strip mine the Raging Ravine. And he needs a bunch more artifacts. He could have it, though. It's pretty disgusting that I could lose this game. It's kind of funny. Urza's a powerful card. So he needs three more artifacts to, to win the game. Oh, Echo Fiance. Okay. Mm. Oh, I can cast Mystic Confluence. Awesome. I, I really just did a good job leaving my mana up in the correct way. Echo Fiance is going to be a tough sell. Like, that I don't think leads to very many wins if he's going to spend six mana to draw seven cards. Just because it's pretty hard to imagine he has too much more in the way of like Mox type cards. If he's spinning top here, yeah, th this is over now. There's just no way he can put up a good offense while also answering Mystic Confluence here if his play is to spin the Sensei's top. So 
I think we got round one here. All it took was just an incredibly busted draw. And you know what? I take back everything I said about Fast Bond. <laughs> Fast Bond is, is actually busted. Fast Bond obviously has its good moments. And there we go. Nice little 1-0 to start with. You'll love to see it. Before we get to the next round, I just want to show you this pack Salvato opened. He picked one to Ancestral, passing Sapphire, Mana Crypt, Mana Drain, Broadside Bombardiers. And that is how I got like a six pick fast bond. You don't usually see that, but he took Ancestral. Um, Jesse took Sapphire, which is, I think, a little ambitious. I, I would, or aggressive rather. I would just take Mana Crypt. Sandy then took Mana Crypt. Uh, and then the one of the other. Uh, People on the other team took Broadside Bombardiers, and then Ick took Mana Drain, and then someone else took Natural Order, and then I got the Fast Bond. What a wild pack, though. All right, let's get to round two. All righty, time for round two. Battle against Strider. <clears throat> Osman Osguni. Uh, I was playing like a four-color mid-range sort of deck. Grist, Leyline Binding, Leovold, that sort of thing. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll, I, I will keep this. I can't, I can't mulligan this. I think I'm going to have to play the Balaged Recovery too, because I'm going to go turn one Balaged Sanctuary, turn two Sakura Tribe Elder. And I'm hoping to find another red source so that I can play a gold span on turn four here. Turn one Elves. That's a little awkward. You know, playing against Grist, I'm just going to give it one more turn here. <clears throat> maybe maybe this is too clever, but uh, Stern Scolding does counter Grist, and Grist would be a really hard card for me to beat. So, hmm, well, that worked out worse. Got the Stern Scolding and the Dragon. All right. The thing is, the Dragon getting hit isn't actually the end of the world, because I have Chandra, and I actually drew the Zeotor's Proving Ground, so it actually worked out just fine. I didn't really get punished for not playing Sakura Tribe Elder. Oh, recycling a troll here. Okay. And then next turn, I'll sack Sakura Tribe Elder for a mountain. Get this Chandra going. Not loving the position. Him is just a really strong card. Ooh, Rafine's Tower. Okay, there might be a a turn delay before my opponent plays something because if they have to play tower to get access to blue and white mana maybe we're not seeing something big come down this turn which would be nice because I would love to be able to go like Chandra kill Lenore Elves and then uh, be able to untap with Chandra on a plenty of mana all right hedge maze is the play interesting so maybe they need blue mana and don't really care about getting white mana. They do have Leyline Binding in their deck, but if you don't have it in hand, then maybe getting the Surveil one is worth a little bit more. All right, not the end of the world. I didn't want Goldspan to get hit. That was the card I least wanted to to see hit, but at least it didn't take both Goldspan and Chandra, and I guess keeping the Forest... Well, I don't really need it for Goldspan, but this isn't too bad. Okay, Hedge Maze didn't mill anything, and there's Recurring Nightmare. Oh. Well, shoot. I guess Troll of Kaza Doom is going to get me good. I mean, I would imagine you're Recurring Nightmare back the Troll here. And I don't really have a good answer to that. I can't even play Chandra into it, and Flame Slash doesn't hit it either. I can't say I'm in good shape here. Oh. No play? All right, well, I'll take advantage of that as best I can. Let's get a mountain, draw. That's not too exciting. Chandra. I think a pretty clear minus on the, on the elf here. Deal four, pass the turn, and let's get some time walks going, shall we? If I can find a time walk, get a couple Chandra activations, like we, we could be... Could be getting somewhere. Why would you not swap that? I guess you really wanted the fourth mana from the Lanor Elf. Maybe fifth if you have an untapped land. That's wild, though, not putting the Troll of Kaza Doom into play. Huh. And then no plays this turn. Okay. Whew, and I drew Minskin Boo? All right. Um, I'm still going to 
exile my top card. Time walk would be so disgusting here. <laughs> right, island. All right, well, sure. Minsk and Boo. Plus, and I mean, no plays here either. All right, we're getting into like game over territory, which is funny because a turn ago I thought I was just losing. If they just put troll into play, I guess I would have lost. <laughs> but now it's like, you could play a creature and put a troll into play, and it just wouldn't really do much for for you. Um, I have a lot of mana. Also, almost any spell I draw here could be just a banger. I just have enough mana to really utilize any of the cards in my deck, so I'm feeling pretty good now. All right, there's the fifth color of mana, the Blood Crypt. I guess we'll find out what the elves was being saved for in terms of casting something big. I don't know, like a Chaos Defiler would be pretty good. Leyline Binding plus another spell would be good. Fracture Identity on Minsk and Boo. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's the kind of card that can really get it done because now you get to kill the Minsk and Boo and the Chandra and end up with a Boo of your own that you can also turn into a troll. Oh, Fracture Identity just destroyed me here. Killed both my Planeswalkers and put a 4-4 into play and a Planeswalker into play. I guess Minsk and Boo is a pretty busted card. And we got the troll back too. Oh, yeah. I'm just dead now. Well, that was insane. That's about the best I've ever seen Fractured Identity be. Yeah. All right. All right. Good beats. Um, well, I definitely want Wasteland against the Million Color deck. What do I want to cut, though? I think Pyrokinesis looks kind of bad. I have an elf, but I have some other removal for elves. All right. I think I'm just going to do that. Looks good to me. All right. Well, I'm on the play here. And... Oh, this hand is great. Once Upon a Time doing work once again. So what I'm looking for with Once Upon a Time is a blue or green land. I guess we'd be happy with either. And so then I can go turn one fast bond into Time Walk, into 4-4 Hex, four, four Hex Drinker, or I could also go turn one fast bond Farseek. Is that better? I don't know, but either way, I'm going to cast this. Hopefully, if you hit a land, Library of Alexandria would be kind of interesting, too. Okay, so I don't want the Chrome Host Seed Shark. Do I want Waterlogged Grove? No, I think I just want Forest. Forest, Fast Bond, Vista, and then sack this, and I think... I'm just going to get Forest here and cast Farseek and get Xander's Lounge. All right. And then this, and then next turn I can go Time Walk Hex Drinker. I guess I think that's better. I don't really know. It's, it's, I basically get to attack with, with Hex Drinker turn one anyway. So, or the first turn after playing it anyway. So, all right. Lands are fine here. Interesting. Um, Hex Drinker. Time walk, level it up twice. Yeah, so let's go time walk. I'm just going to play the Shatter Skull Smashing here and pay three life, level up Hex Drinker twice. And now if I draw any land, I just have a effectively turn two fully leveled up Hex Drinker. All right, so I don't hate lands here. Well, that's not the land I wanted, but that's okay. If I get turn two Leyline Binding or Grist, it's going to be pretty, pretty annoying, but... Let's send for four here. I guess my backup plan is Raging Ravine. And the odds that my opponent has a non-instant way to kill Hex Drinker because it already has pro instance is not the highest, but I mean, it is possible, certainly. It would be, I would feel a lot better if the Raging Ravine was an, an untapped land. That being said, Raging Ravine is a good card. Like, it gets to attack itself, so I've had some good fast bond, uh, Time walk draws, I will say that. Those are both cards that are really nice to see in your opening hand. Though, unlike Fast Bond, Time Walk is good to see at any point in the game and sometimes even gets stronger as the game goes on. Well, it generally does get stronger as the game goes on, but if you uh, play it early, you also end up winning pretty nicely. All right. I guess it actually kind of worked out better because now I can level this up and then attack with Ravine. I'm not going to chain lightning the elf. I don't think I need to do that. 
and then that the chain lightning is now lethal next turn. Okay, attack with these two. And they could have swords to plowshares, yeah. Fair enough. Take six down to eight, take six down to two, chain lightning. Can't block it or anything like that. And then next turn, I'm not really sure what how many outs they've got to a hex drinker, but I gotta say, hex drinkers won me like every game so far, so that's why I respect the card so much. It's just an awesome card. They could play the one ring. They do have that in their deck. The one ring would at least buy one turn and potentially the opportunity to play more. Knight of Autumn. Oh, that buys a turn. Gain your four life. <laughs> it, it's funny. It doesn't buy a turn against Hex Drinker's normal clock, but it does against the, the Chain Lightning I've got in hand. I'll play the Copperline Gorge. I'm still waiting on the Chain Lightning. I just don't think killing the Elf does much. They've got a lot of green mana. I'm not sure what they could do with their fifth mana here. Fracture Identity also doesn't even do anything right now. Cycle Generous End, okay. Two cards left in hand. Picked up a Bayou. Obviously, like a Shieldred's Edict would be really bad for me. But Hex Drinker is giving them the business. I mean, I effectively played a turn 2 4 4 Hex Drinker and then leveled it up pretty shortly thereafter, so seems like it's pretty tough to beat. Are we going to get Fallen Shinobi here? That would be really funny. Still probably wouldn't do the trick, but it would be funny. Alright, take two. And do you have something that answers the Hex Drinker? I mean, it's just going to attack you for six. Let's see. Might be one ring time now. Oh, Recurring Nightmare. Getting back the generous Ent and making a food token. I'm glad I can't save the Chain Lightning. Though I guess killing the Elf would have also accomplished the same goal. Because they wouldn't have had the mana to, to use a generous Ent. Alright, close game. Mm -hmm. Chain Lightning you. Attack for six and go to game three. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Uh, yeah, I still don't really want pyrokinesis. I don't think I do. I just don't. I don't like the idea of gemstone caverns with exploration or fast bond. I guess. I suppose if I have a hand with those, I can just choose not to put this into play. That's fine. Chain lightning and flame slash both seem acceptable so far. Maybe I just place. Play this instead of Sakura Tribe Builder. No, you know what? I I, I don't I don't like it. I, I don't think I want to do that. All right, let's go. Hoo, hoo, hoo. That is a Library of Alexandria, and this is a very good matchup for that. Born even Mulligan. Just their deck's not that fast for the most part. I mean, obviously Elf into Gristlebrand or Leovold can be annoying, but uh, Library and then a DT with that Xander's Lounge. So I might be able to just. Pick up a DT for a time walk at some point here. This hand is looking like it's going to discard on turn two, though. Because if you go turn on library and then library and then you don't have a, a play besides your land on turn two, you do end up discarding, but that's a cost I'm willing to bear. All right, mold to six and play turn one elf. I mean, turn one elf is scary. I would like to draw chain lightning. Hex drinker is actually not the worst because. If I draw a green source, I can go library, green source, hex drinker. Okay, we're not seeing a two, turn two, uh, three drop. I guess I'll do like that. All right, draw a card. Oh, 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 once upon a time is so sick here. Let's go once upon a time to look for that green source, shall we? All right, we found, whew, almost missed too. Breeding pool, pay two life. And then ignoble hierarch was such an absurd draw too. Well, this really developed, and this is this is one of those games where library is just going to be completely off the wall good. I could play a Minsk and Boo next turn. That is definitely an option. Could also, I could next turn DT, but that doesn't seem like a very good play, like DT time walk. But well, well, we'll see what they do first. 
Corsair of Crufix into Rafine's Tower. I mean, that is pretty good. Okay, let's draw a card. Uh, let's see. Croho Seed Shark. So, oh, wow, Chain Lightning too. Okay, let's go nine cards, eight cards. Mm, yeah, go to seven cards, Chain Lightning. Actually, hold on. I'm going to DT for Time Walk here because I want to make sure this resolves. And then go to seven cards, Chain Lightning, the Land or Elf. And then now I can go Sago. They draw Zagoth Triumph. Their top card is Glissa Sun Slayer. End of turn, I'm going to Library. And then I'm going to go Land, Goldspan, Attack, Time Walk. And I think I'll be able to figure out a way to win from there. That's my assumption. The, I guess the, the thing that could disrupt me is Leyline Binding specifically could stop Goldspan from making a treasure because it doesn't make a treasure off the binding because the binding comes into play and then targets it. It's not a spell targeting it. And then I obviously wouldn't get to attack. But I mean, this this draw... <laughs> the best draw I've had so far was the draw against Jesse where I played turn one, fast bond, time walk, turn two, turn two, my, you know, what he still hadn't taken his second turn, sail into the west, you know, that, that draw. But this might be number two. Getting to library every turn and go like library, ignoble, library, chain lightning, you know, all that is just... Really, really strong. All right. Grist the Hunger Tide. Okay, you can plus one and mill the Glissa Sunsayer to try to hit a land. Oh, Swords to Plowshares. That is a good one to know about. And to the Zagoth Triumph. And then, oh man, I even get to attack the Grist with the Dragon. <laughs> oh, this is, this is really, this is really brutal. I, 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 I guess I'm going to not tap library this turn. But you know what? I'm willing to accept that. I will still be able to library next turn if I so choose. All right. Attack Grist. Attack Grist for five. <laughs> and then Time Walk. Sacking the... <laughs> yeah, why is Time Walk so good? Why do I think that card's a first pickable card? Oh, it's because of this. Time Spiral? No, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that at all. Exploration? Oh, maybe it's time to... I have the Time Spiral, so yeah, it's time to just go hog wild. Exploration, land. Uh, I don't have an untapped land, but I'll play a Xander's Lounge and then play a Minsk and Boo. And plus one. I'll put it on the Boo. I know I can actually plus one... Uh, on the gold span, which is funny, but they're just gonna attack. I don't, I don't really care too much about protecting Minsk and Boo here, but I am gonna play Hex Drinker post combat, sacking this for two green even, and then level up Hex Drinker once. And it's just like, what, what are you gonna do? Th th that was my <laughs> that was my turn four, and then now I have twenty five permanents in play. Oh, Library of Alexandria, Time Walk. These cards are good. I just think the fourth pick library was still egregious. I don't know. Every time you have that card in your opening hand, you just win the game. Like, obviously you don't win every game and there's games where it's too slow or whatever, but the opportunity cost of a land that taps for colors, it's kind of like putting strip mine in your deck and people don't usually pass fourth pick strip mines all that often. And library is much better than strip mine. Like if those two were in my pack, I would just always take library. Well, I mean, pick one, pack one. Obviously, once once it's pack three of Crucible and Fast Bond, you're not taking library there, but... The point still stands, and uh, opponent's got a Swords to Plowshares in hand. Could attack Minsk and Boo down to one, I guess. Fractured Identity on the Minsk and Boo is like maybe the scariest thing, and that's not even going to be close to enough. And to cap it all off, I have Exploration now, which means this Time Spiral next turn is going to be pretty thick. I also could like... Chrome Host Seed Shark, attack with Goldspan, play Time Spiral, make a 6-6. Six, six. Like, I can redraw the Time Walker to DT off the Time Spiral and take another turn. I have a Balaged Recovery in my deck, or you know, that I could use, or a Tamiyo. Yeah, this, is a, this is a good Time Walk deck, as, as they usually are, and uh, it worked out really nicely. All right, we're coming in. I mean, I'll let Minsk and Boo get attacked down to one. I'm fine with that. 
I'm not giving up Hex Drinker because that's another way I could win the game. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to use the the minus two ability on Minskin Boo, but I think the I think the plus one ability will be ample to take this game over. Well, take this game over. I already have firm control of the game. Swords to Plowshares is just not going to be good enough. I'm not sure what else you could have that could get you out of this because Goldspan and Boo are both huge threats. So is Minskin Boo. So is Hex Drinker. They can't even start to think about the time spiral. All right, here's an overgrown tomb. Gain a life. We're passing the turn and hoping Swords to Plowshares gets me. I guess it could be the that could be the play. Oh no, here we go. Into Eternal Witness, getting back Grist. I guess. All right. Well, I mean, I'm gonna get another turn here. Let's see. Let's see what the play is. Do you swords the gold span? Do you swords the hex drinker? It's not like you can really beat hex drinker. I probably am gonna cast time spiral now because I have so much mana that I can't really imagine losing if I cast it. Obviously, it's possible, but I'm not even gonna play the copper line gorge first. I don't think. But it, I also don't think it really makes too much sense to attack first. So if I put the plus one, plus one counters on Boo, yeah, I mean, that's the card I, I would rather than Swords. So if you, you're going to Swords to Plowshares the Boo. Go for it now. I don't think I'm even pumping Hex Drinker. I'm just attacking with the Dragon. Because that gives me enough mana to go Chrome Host, Seed Shark, Time Spiral. And I, I, without having played either of these lands, I don't think. Because just because I could, I could find untapped lands to play instead. I don't really care if I lose out on that. And then that gives me. I get to attack for five, put Osmanaz Guni to ten, then cast Time Spiral and have a Chrome Host Seed Shark. The Time Spiral makes a six six incubate token. Minsk and Boo is still in play, even if Boo is gone. Or you swords the Goldspan Dragon, I guess, in which case. You get hit for seven, and I get a treasure. And I don't play. I can't play Chrome Host Seed Shark then, but I still just cast Time Spiral. So either way, it looks pretty good to me. All right, Minsk and Boo gets the counters. Let's go to attacks. Are you swordsing the gold span? We'll see. No, I guess not, because these two are getting to attack. All right. And now, even if Swords hits the gold span, I still get a treasure token. So now I can actually do the whole Chrome Host Seed Shark play either way, which that's pretty nice. I don't mind that at all. And we're just going to take 11. Taking 11 seems like a tough way to go about it, but I, I guess that is, that is something you could do. All right, Eternal Witness blocks Boo to save a point of damage. Mm, I don't know about that one. Don't think that one is going to work out. And there is a reanimate coming, but... Well, not really, because I'm casting Time Spiral one way or another, but when it look when my opponent's deciding what they're going to do, obviously they have to factor that in, and maybe reanimating Eternal Witness is a decent way. Like, you Swords the Boo, go to 11. No, but then you can't reanimate Eternal Witness because it hasn't died. Yeah, that that's tough. I'm not sure what they're going to do. No blocks, okay. At about a minute of priority every time. <laughs> All right, so I'll sack this for blue. Let's cast the Seed Shark. And cast Time Spiral. And let's see what's up here. Now you have to use the Swords, because it's going to go away. So Swords Goldspan or Swords the Boo, either way. Not the best deal. You could also Swords Hex Drinker, I guess, but I just don't see how this game's winnable. If, if I were my opponent, I would have conceded like seven minutes ago, but I, I mean, I'll take it. I would really like to draw my Time Spiral hand and see what I get to do here. And I got to admire the fighting spirit. I'm not saying that I would be right to have conceded. I'm just saying when I when I see this board, I'm just like, well, I'm not, not beating this. I mean, you saw what I conceded to in game one. It was like a troll plus a Minskin Boo, which... I mean, it was going to kill me, but I guess I could have played for another turn. All right, swords on the Chrono Seed Shark? All right. I guess maybe if you're, like, playing to a Wrath, that's something, sure. Okay, none of these... 
None of these cards literally win the game. Let's draw a card of the library. Never mind. Never mind. Demonic Tutor. Time Walk. And, I mean, I assume that's good. That, that'll be enough. Okay. And that should be enough. And on to round three. 2-0. and oh. All right. We are playing against Troll Ascetic, who's playing another kind of like three, four-color mid-range style deck with Lutri as a companion, as you see. I have I don't see my opening hand until Troll reveals Lutri. And what do we got here? I have Exploration. Oh, I actually think this works. So I'm going to keep... Because I get to go turn one Exploration into Balaged Recovery as a land. And then... I would like to draw a land on turn two or three, turn two ideally, a tap land this turn, like a Xander's Lounge this turn would be great, but I do get Sakura Tribelder. Oh, a red source would be insane. All right, Shatter Skull to Hammer Pass. Oh, this, some, some drafts, everything really works out, you know, the way you want it. And here I'm going to get to Sakura Tribelder up Island. Troll's going to play like a tap land this turn or something probably. And then I'm going to get to cast Sail into the West. Oh, hold on. I set an upkeep stop. Because I want to Sail into the West on my upkeep because I don't want to discard anything else. Discarding Mystic Confluence, you know, it's a, it's a little bit painful, but I think that's okay. I will accept it. Because I'm going to get to Sail. With, you've got seven cards. I have one. <laughs> yeah, I will embark on a, on a fantastical journey here. I wonder if Troll is going to get the, take the cash in. I think so. This doesn't look like this. Oh, no. No, we didn't. Um, interesting. I haven't played a land yet. I can DT this turn. So it's kind of funny. So I'm going to DT for Time Walk. I guess I just DT this turn with these two untapped lands. And then what I'm going to hope is that Next turn, I draw an untapped land, and then I can go Vista, Time Walk, Time Spiral, all in the same turn. I guess it has to be a blue source. What's most likely going to happen is I'm going to uh, go Time Walk, Once Upon a Time, play two tap lands. But we'll see. I don't need an upkeep stop anymore. Yeah, so let's go Once Upon a Time first. Hmm... Oh, Chrome Host Seed Shark. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right. Prismatic Vista. So I'm only going to get to play one of my untapped lands. Second Island was is carrying a lot of weight here. This draw would be a lot worse without the Second Island. Because I get to go Chrome Host. Shiny and Chrome. Time Walk. This deck has... This deck's very good, but it's also drawn exceedingly well. Like... Oh, we got solituded. All right, that's that's a good play. And I guess I play Xander's Lounge. Take my turn. <laughs> I guess I have to do that. Let's go Minsk and Boo. I actually think, funnily enough, I'm going to go Ignoble, attack with Boo for two, and then throw to the Noble Hierarch to just make it so Troll has just no chance of doing anything this game, casting any spells. <laughs> Sack the Boo, hit the hit the Noble, draw two, play Raging Ravine, play Zeotor's Proving Ground, pass the turn. I have so many things. <laughs> Troll has seven cards total. I have nine more. All right, it, it was a close game. You can say that. Both teams played hard. All right, let's go to game two. Uh, not actually loving Wasteland here. Troll's mana is a lot, is pretty good. My mana is like kind of on the edge. Spirokinesis does seem good still. I don't want Legolas's quick reflexes. Yeah, I kind of. I don't think I want Gemstone. Is kind of the conclusion I came to. I think we're good here. Let's uh, let's see if we can continue the streak of absolutely unbelievable draws. Troll's gonna loot tree and yep, yep, we sure can. We sure can. This it this hand is like turn one, Vista get forest, play my two lands, turn scolding your turn two play, turn three, 
Well, then it gets a little dicier because DT for time walk doesn't do much in this setup. I might I might be DTing for a land or something. Oh, copper line gorge. Oh, what a good draw. I just keep the hits keep coming and they don't stop coming. All right, play this, play this. I don't think I want to cast DT here. I don't have a way to cast Time Spiral next turn, so I'll just wait because depending on what I draw, I could do something pretty good here. Nature's Lore. Oh, can't stern scolding that. I guess maybe I should have just DT'd for Minsk and Boo. Maybe that was, actually that was probably just the play. I got a little caught up in the whole time spiral business. I'm in the time spiral business and the business is booming. Okay, well, let's just hope to draw a land this turn. Um, that's interesting. Why don't I just cast once upon a time here? Goldspan Bat Dragon Sakura Tribe Elder. Hmm. I was hoping to hit a land. I think I'll just take the Tribe Elder. I'll get another island. I'll cast Sakura Tribe Elder. And then I'll pass. And then I could have taken Goldspan and then just DT'd for Time Walk. But I kind of like this because I feel like if I can spiral with Fast Bond in play, I'll be really happy. Dak Faden. Oh, that doesn't really affect the board, so I guess I'm not too unhappy. And then end of turn, I crack Tribe Elder. If I draw a land, it's actually kind of interesting. So if I draw a land here, I mean, if I draw a land, it's just excellent for me. Let's, I don't need a second black. I guess I'll just get another red. All right. Yeah, because now... I could time spiral, but there's no real reason to do that first. I think I'm going to go... Uh, you know what? I think I just get Minsk and Boo again. Well, I say again. I, I should have gotten it before. T Solitude is like the most annoying card here. But it doesn't have it. Because now I just get to kill Dak Faden. Put Troll in a position to like deal with Minsk and Boo. And I just have time spiral as my follow-up. Hmm. Okay, Questing Beast is good. That kills Minsk and Boo and hits me for four. I guess I just cast Time Spiral first. I don't really think there's a reason to do anything else. Untap. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So I don't get to Library, but I do get to Flame Slash Questing Beast. Oh, wait. No. Okay, I did mess up there. Bad. At this point. Yeah, I, I really should have not. Got a little too excited because I was going to crack the Waterlog Grove anyway. So I guess I'll just sack the Waterlog Grove, see if I draw something. Because I didn't draw anything, I'm just going to wait. But I could have cracked it first and then Libraried I kinda, since I had a card in reserve there. Yeah, that, that could be pretty costly because that does mean I A, don't draw off Library this turn, so I'm down a card. And then B, I would have gotten to deploy Far Seek and Sakura Tribe Builder, which are a little bit slow here. All right, Oust. Sure. I mean, I have enough mana that the not playing these isn't like the end of the world. It's just getting being a card down could definitely matter here. What are we up to, Senor Troll? Brea's Apprentice. Oh, okay, sure. That is acceptable. And a Novice Inspector. All right, so we're putting some things into play. All right, let's draw, let's draw, and, okay, well, let's cast, let's play a land, and then cast a Shatter Skull Smashing on these two, and that cost me six mana, and I'll still be able to library next turn. All right, we're still in pretty good shape, but obviously it could have been in a lot better. And this was a really bad time spiral overall. I hit Flame Slash, Shatter Skull Smashing, four land and, and three, or five land and three mana things. So I hit like two spells and eight land, but I should have been up an additional card off library. So I'm hoping that doesn't come back to bite me too badly here. On the plus side, if I get to play another game with this deck, I could have another busted draw. <laughs> Well, I would like to, because Salvato went 1-2, which is kind of unfortunate. His his deck looked really sick. 
Scavenging ooze. Uh, all right, there's a couple of creatures in the graveyard. And hoping that at some point Troll puts Lutri into hand. All right, that's what the play was. All right, Chain Lightning would actually be a pretty good draw this turn. Still got it. All right, let's draw. Okay, Chain Lightning, the Scavenging Ooze. And you can eat one thing, but that's not going to be enough to keep it alive. And then I can play one card here. I guess I'll play Sakura Tribe Elder. Pass the turn. I don't have any of the Surveil Lands. Otherwise, I would uh, maybe play Farseek. But Elder seems good. I have one Swamp left to get. That's actually all I have left to get. Funny. Okay, well, I've got a lot of spells left in my deck, so I guess I'm not too worried yet. This library is really, really doing work here. Mm -hmm. So I still have, like, Chrome Host Seed Shark and all those things. All right. Troll has five cards in hand. One's a Lutri. My hand is still really bad. So hopefully, hopefully I can find a little something here. The Questing Beast was a really good comeback. Oh, what is this? This can't be good for me. Pest Infestation for three. Yeah, that isn't great. I don't have any sweepers. The Fast Bond also makes my hand a little worse. All right, well, Time Walk was a good draw. Into Hex Drinker. Okay. Um, let's cast Time Walk. Cast Hex Drinker. I still think I need to keep library going, so I'm, I'm still going to wait a turn. I need, like, one more good piece of action. Eh, it doesn't really count, so gold span or something. Oh, Pyrokinesis is interesting. Okay, well, i got to get this thing up to level 8. So I'm going to have to wait on Pyrokinesis. And I think... I think it... Is it time to... Well, I'm going to play Ignoble. And then I get to attack for 7 here. Is it time to start playing all my stuff out? What do I get from that? I miss... I hit a land drop? Because if I... I'm going to see one more card. All right. I kind of think it is actually time to... To just cast my spells. Get my Xander's Lounge. My hand, my deck is just so concentrated, full of action, that like I just feel I'm gonna want to cast Turn Scolding this turn. And I'm if I'm gonna cast Pyrokinesis next turn, I really want to have basically three more mana available to me. Okay. Flame Tongue Kabu. Um I'll Stern Scolding that. Stern Scolding's really good. It trades up on mana really nicely. I take seven here. Yeah, I guess I go to five. Okay, Tamio, Balaged Recovery, Goldspan Dragon, Sail into the West. Okay. He's got two cards in hand. I guess I just don't Pyrokinesis. Well... Problem is, Pyrokinesis gives him a bunch of life. I have a lot of cards that would be good here. I think I will just cast Sail into the West. It's pretty hard to miss. I mean, it's not impossible, but I would say pretty hard. Let's draw seven. You drawing some cards, Troll? He is indeed. Uh, yeah, this, this should be enough. Balaged Recovery on Time Walk. Hold on, hold on. Six cards. One, two, three. Uh, no, I don't. I I don't think I need the library. Mm, no, not really. Okay. Balagid recovery. Time walk. And I can time walk through mana leak. He's got mana leak in his deck, but I have enough mana to to do that. Another reason not to library. That might just be enough. My alternate plan is, okay, I mean, I'm just going to pay the mana and 
Hope this works. If he's got mana tithe or something also, then he's got solitude. Okay. Yeah, that will not do it. Whoo, we got there with the Balaged recovery. All right, well, almost spewed it off by with the library misplaying the last game, but like this tech was just so sick and had the capability of such busted draws. I mean, first of all, time walk with Tamio and Balaged recovery, where are you, is great. That just obviously any deck can win with those. Goldspan also plays nicely into time walk, and so do the Planeswalkers. Minsk and Boo, Chandra, Chromo Sea Chart kind of counts, as well as Time Spiral also plays nicely into it. Then he had the Fast Bond Exploration Time Spiral Sail into the West, which came out like gangbusters in this draft. One of my complaints about Fast Bond is that it's inconsistent, but in this draft, I kept drawing Fast Bond or Exploration like Clockwork in my opening hand and hit a draw seven right away. Yeah, that's when those cards really shine. Pyrokinesis never did much, but it could have. Chain Lightning and Flame Slash and Stern Scolding were all a great interaction. DT tied the deck together because I had so many broken cards. And of course, the Planeswalkers were fantastic. And then Hex Drinker, probably this, the the MVP if you rule out Time Walk, which is in effectively the Hall of Fame. It's always the MVP of every deck it appears in. But, uh, oh, and Library too. Yeah, this deck was just sick and it drew well. When you have a sick deck and it draws well, it's just unstoppable. As you see, this deck didn't get stopped. I mean, this deck is... Probably like a 9 out of 10, you know, something like that. Just having like library, time walk, fast bond with all this stuff is, you know, very, very strong. And when those decks draw well, I was drawing at like an 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 level, maybe 10 out of 10, like close. Yeah, obviously you're just going to roll everyone with turn one, fast bond, play six lands, time walk, time spiral. Like that's just what happened. And it's pretty funny when you get to Harlem Globetrotter on the, the Washington Generals of the opposition. But you know what? That'll do it. That's a 3 0. That's a team victory. And, uh, that's a successful draft in the books with also, by the way, Once Upon a Time still being very, very good. All right. That'll do it for today. I appreciate you watching as I time walk all over everyone. That was that was awesome. And uh, you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.